All right, y'all. So in 8.6, we're going to look at polynomial inequalities. Remember, inequalities is your less than, greater than, less than and equals, and greater than and equals. So the steps to solving these. All right, so the first step I do, I'm going to set that polynomial equal to zero. All right, at that point, I'm going to solve for the variable. Now, these are going to be quadratic, so all of these but one will give me two answers. And the one that only gives me one answer is because it's a repeating answer. Um, all right, so I'm going to solve for the variable. Then I'm going to set up a number line using the solutions. So my number line will sort of look like a number line, and I'll put my two solutions. My two solutions will be my A and B. All right, once I got my numbers on here, I have to test numbers to see if they're true or zero. So y'all, the only number I always test on these is zero. So I'm gonna test zero for true or false. Okay, now, if it's true, then we shade the section zero was located. If it's false, so if it's false, Then shade the sections or sections where zero was not located. Okay, so there's two possible outcomes on these. These will either shade in the middle, so this would be the true part, or they shade on both the ends. So what I mean is, in this case, if it's true for the left interval, it'll also be true for the right interval. If it's true in the middle, then it will only be true in the middle, okay? So the easiest number I find is zero, and I figure out which one of these regions zeroes in, and then I check it in my original polynomial to see if it's true or false, okay? Now, after I figured out where my zero was located and whether stuff is true or false, at that point, I'm going to write the answer. In interval notation. Now, since we're dealing with inequalities, on interval notation, I'm going to use parentheses if it's greater than or less than. So I'm going to use parentheses around my numbers if it's only greater than or less than. And then I'm going to use brackets 
if it's greater than or equal or less than or equal. So if it's got equals, we use brackets in our interval notation instead of parentheses. Now, infinity will always have parentheses, okay? We're talking about the numbers. Hey, y'all, so that's the steps we're going to follow. Now, oh, let me do one more thing here. A star on this one. If we only get one solution, and you'll get one solution from a repeating factor, like I said, but if we only get one solution, then that is the only number we exclude from the domain. And then our last star. If the polynomial does not factor, then we have a no solution. And in math lab for a no solution, we're going to use what they call the empty set. Looks like a zero with a line through it, okay? So that's what we use in math lab when we're talking about interval notation, when we don't have a solution, okay? And usually one of these will give us this answer. All right, y'all, so these will say solve the following inequality. Alrighty, so my number one, x minus two times x plus three is less than zero. So the first thing we'll do, this is already factored. So I'm gonna take both of these factors and set them equal to zero. Now, we're not worried about that little inequality right now. Once we do our number line and we start testing, then we'll be worried about that, okay? So we're just going to solve these to get my two numbers. So, y'all, the first one we would add 2 and get x is a positive 2. The second one we would subtract 3 and get x is a negative 3. So now I'm going to set up my number line. Now you got to put the numbers in order, so negative 3 will be on the left side, and 2 will be on the right side. So since 0 is the easiest number to plug in, I'm going to test 0, but you got to realize where is 0 on this number line. So 0 is in between negative 3 and 2. So since zero's in between negative three and two, I'm going to test my zero. When I plug zero in for the x's, if it's true, I'm going to shade that where zero was located. But if I get a false answer, I do not shade where zero was located, and I'm going to shade the outsides, okay? So we're testing zero by putting zero in for these x's and seeing if it's less than zero. So that'll give me 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 3 has to be less than 0. All right, well, that's going to give me negative 2 times 3 has to be less than 0. Negative 2 times 3 gives us a negative 6 less than 0. That is true. So... I'm going to draw my number line again so you can keep up. 
So since I tested zero and it was true, I'm going to shade the section where zero was located. So shade the section that zero was located since true. All right, which means my answer will go from negative three to two in interval notation. I just got to figure out, do I want to use parentheses or brackets around my numbers? We all right up here, we said, if it's greater than or less than, I'm less than, we got to use parentheses. So my interval notation will be parentheses, negative three, comma, two, close parentheses. So, since it's shaded in the middle, it will not shade on the ends, okay? It's either going to look like that or that when we're done. So, really, the trick on these is getting them factored so that you can set up your number line, okay? All right, y'all, question on that. All righty, so let's do more. I think there's seven of these for us tonight, okay? All right, number two is a x squared minus 14x plus 33 is going to be greater than zero. So notice the first one they already had factored. The second one, we actually got a factor. And I'm going to set everything equal to zero, remember? So the x squared will be an x and an x. All right, y'all, that last number is positive. That means both factors will have the same sign as the middle, so they're both going to be negative. Now, I need factors of 33 that add to get 14. So let's see, 33, I can get 1 times 33, and I guess 3 times 11. The only factors that will add to get 14 are 3 and 11. All right, so now I'm factored. Set both my factors equal to 0 and solve. So both these were negative. When I solve them, they're both going to become positive. So add 11 to my first one. We get x equals 11. Add 3 to the second. And I get x equals 3. So now let me set up my number line. So y'all, let's see. 3 will come first. And then 11 will come second. So I'm still going to test zero, but guess what? Zero's in the first section this time because zero is less than three, okay? So I'm testing zero still. If it's true, I will shade the first section and the last section. If this is false, we will only shade the middle section, okay? So to test zero, we're going to put a zero in for these x's. So zero squared minus 14 times zero plus 33 has to be greater than zero. Now, y'all, you can test any number here you want. I use zero because it's the easiest one to multiply. But you could use a four, five, six, any number in here. You could use any number over here, zero, one, two, negative numbers. Or you could use larger numbers. It don't matter. You're just worried about whether that number is true or false in that section, okay? So look here, zero squared is zero. So that's zero. Minus 14 times 0 is 0, plus 33 
has to be greater than zero. And y'all, this is definitely going to be 33 greater than zero is true. So since this was true where zero was located, since it's true where zero was located, I'm going to shade that. And I got to shade the other end. So remember, if you shade one end, you got to shade the other end, okay? So when we get an interval like this, this will start at negative infinity, and it goes to the number 3. So at that 3, I'm only greater than, so I use parentheses. Now my union, my union don't start at 3 and go. Because at negative three, at three is the last point on that interval. So then the union will start at the next interval, which is at 11. And from 11, it's true as it goes towards positive infinity, okay? So remember, when you use the union on these, we don't include the section that got false for this, okay? All right, y'all, question on that. Yes, sir, I have one. Okay. I was wondering why we were using infinities now. Oh, because remember, these graphs go on forever and ever in either direction. Okay. So always put infinities? If it's, if it's the two intervals like this. Now, while going the one I had in the middle, since it's didn't go past negative three and two. We do not use the intervals for infinity, okay? Okay. How so, do we know they don't go past that? Do what now? How do we know they don't go past that? Oh, because it's true here. Everything else will be false over here. Any number I pick from this side will be false. Any number I pick to the right of two will make that false when you plug them numbers in. So everything over here makes it false. The only stuff that will be true on this will be the stuff that is in the middle that we shaded. So let's see. Let's put a 5 in here. Five's on this side, right? Yes, sir. So if you tested 5 on that, that would give me 5 minus 2 times 5 plus 3 has to be less than 0. All right, so let's see. That's going to give us 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. But look what's happening. 3 times 8 is 24. But 24 is not less than 0. That is false. Yes, sir. So any number that we pick bigger than 2 will make it false. Any number on this side less than that negative 3 will make it false. The only numbers that will make this a true inequality are the numbers in between our interval. And that's what's happening over here. Any number that I pick on the left side or any number bigger than 11 will make that true when you plug the numbers in. These numbers in the middle, if you put a 4 in there, that will give you a false. 5, any number between 3 and 11 will make that false when you plug them numbers in, okay? Okay. All right, y'all, so what they're going to do, these are all going to be sort of quadratic. They're just going to mix them up on us. X squared minus 4X minus 18 is uh, greater than or equal to X minus 4. Now, let me show you something else on this one. I'll show you another way to look at this. Um, see how this says greater than zero? So remember, the x-axis is zero for the y values. So what's happening here, when I graph this, over here is what, 3? And let's say over here was 11. When you graph it, since it's greater than zero, you'll see that these two ends are above the x-axis. Anything below the x-axis would make that false. So you can almost 
graph them and look at them. So let me do that real quick. I'm going to go to y equals and put in my x squared minus 14x plus 33. All right, and I don't want to shade, so let me go all the way left and turn that off. Alrighty, so now when I hit graph, all right, so let me go a little bit wider on my window. Let me go to about 15 on the X max so I can see the whole graph. And then I'll hit graph. So if you notice, the part of this graph that's above the line is from the left until you get over here to three on the X axis. From 3 to 11, it's below the x-axis, which means it's less than 0, not greater. And then that right side is going upwards as my x's go towards infinity. So when you graph them, greater than would be above the line, less than would be below, okay? All right, y'all, so this one. Same thing, except they're throwing this X and this 4 over here. What we want to do is get everything on one side and put a 0 over here. So to get a 0, we'll subtract X from both sides. And we're going to add 4 to both sides. So we can move two things at once by changing the sign of both of them, okay? So bring down that x squared, negative 4, negative 1, give you negative 5x, negative 18 and 4, give you negative 14, and this is greater than or equal to 0 now. Now, we're going to factor that, and I'm going to set it equal to 0 at this point. x squared again is an x and an x. All right, check this out. This last number is negative. Anytime the last number is negative, you got unlike signs. And they got to subtract to get that 5. So let's play with 14. We got 1 and 14. Oh, what's else? 2 and 7. So the two numbers you're going to use are 7 and 2 because they subtract and get 5. The larger number has the same sign as the middle. So the 7 will be negative and the 5 will be positive. I mean, the 2 will be positive. So now it's factored. We set both of these equal to 0 and solve. So subtract 2 on the first one. Add 7 to the second. All right, so what's that give me? That gives me a number line. Negative 2 would be first. 7 will be the second. So if I'm going to continue testing that 0, this time... Zero's in between the two, the negative two and seven. So zero's located in this middle section this time. Okay. So true, I'm going to shade that. If it's false, I'm going to shade the two ends. <clears throat> all right, y'all. So I'm going to put a zero in for all the X's up here. So I got zero squared. Minus 4 times 0 minus 18 has got to be greater than or equal to 0 minus 4. All right, so like I said, the trick is just uh, all these zeros are big 0. So 0 squared is 0. 4 times 0 is 0. 
So all that's left on my left side is a negative 18 greater than or equal. And then here's 0 minus 4 is a minus 4. But y'all remember, this is false because this negative 18 is a lot more negative than that negative 4. So that is false because remember, negative 4 would be sitting about right here. That negative 18 is way out here, okay? So since this is false, I do not shade the middle. We shade the outsides. So if you put any other number in here from the shaded areas, it would make that true. Any number between negative 2 and 7 are going to make it false. All righty, so interval notation for this one. Notice you got equals in this, so we will use brackets around the numbers. So this interval is coming in from negative infinity until it gets to that negative 2. And then we put a bracket, and then we union that. Remember, we don't put nothing in the middle. That's all false. We start at the 7. And then all this was shaded as we head towards positive infinity. Okay, y'all? So they're either going to start with these infinities if they're shaded on the ends. Or they'll just have the two numbers if they're shaded in the middle. All right, question on that one. Now, are y'all with me on the zero? The reason I'm using zero, because it's easy to plug in and multiply this. If, if I'd have used numbers like eight, well, that would have given me like eight squared, which is 64, four times eight, 32. So I'd have had a lot bigger numbers to play with. So if you just get used to the pattern that it either shades the ends or the middle, you can always use zero, okay? All right, then let me get on to number four here. So four, they start easing up a little bit on the factoring. This number four has a x squared greater than 16. Now, you can subtract 16 and factor that one if you want to. But remember, x squared, the easiest way to solve that when you got x squared in a number is to take square roots of both sides. So I'm going to set the x squared equal to 16, and then I'm going to do square roots. So remember, the square root of 16 will be a plus or minus square root of 16. That's how you get the two answers is that plus or minus. So the radical cancels the exponent leaving the x. And that's going to equal a plus or minus square root of 16 is 4. So your number line will have a negative 4 and a 4. Now I'm still going to test my 0. To see if this is true or false. So to test zero, I'm going to put zero in for that x. So zero squared greater than 16. We all zero squared is a zero. Zero greater than 16 is definitely false. So since that's false, I will not shade where that zero was located. And I'm going to shade on the outsides. 
Now think about this one. This one's not too bad. Zero squared was zero, which is not greater than 16. One is in here. One squared is one. It's not greater than 16. Two squared is four. It's not greater than 16. All these numbers are false. But when you get to the numbers bigger, like five, five times five is 25. That's greater than 16. Six times six is 36. That's greater than 16. All these are true as they go bigger. Over here, negative five times negative five is 25. Negative six times negative six is 36. All those are greater than 16. So all these big numbers when you square them are going to be true. The only stuff false is in between that negative four and four. So interval notation. I got the two intervals. So remember, we're starting at negative infinity until we go to negative four. There's not an equals on this. So we're using parentheses. And then we're going to union. And the second part of this answer starts at four and heads off towards positive infinity. Okay? So if I was to um, graph that up here, when I, um, I'd probably subtract 16, get an x squared minus 16 equals 0. And then I would graph that, and you would see that 4 and negative 4 would be the parts where it's going above that line there, okay? So y'all, they're not too bad. You just got to keep up with where the zero is located and whether it's true or false, okay? All right, so let's see what they're doing here. They got 225 minus x squared is less than or equal to zero. All righty, so I'm going to do the uh, square roots like I did to this one, but I need to move the number over here and then make that negative a positive x squared, okay? So I'm going to subtract my 225 first. So y'all, that brings down that negative x squared is less than or equal to a negative 225. So, next step, y'all, would be to divide by a negative 1, because we want this to be positive. So, if I'm dividing by negative 1, I got to do what else? So y'all, when y'all were solving these for y and y'all divided those by those negatives, y'all remember what you had to do? That little inequality has to reverse when you divide by negatives. So the less than or equals will now become a greater than or equals. So remember, reverse the inequality Since dividing by negative. Oh, that's true 100% of the time. If you're dealing with inequalities, you divide by negatives, you got to flip it so that I get an x squared greater than or equal to a positive 225. All right, so let's do the square roots. One of y'all figure out what the square root of that 225 is for us. So that I get my X. Is it um, 15? Plus or minus 15? 15? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm, that's it. So now I got what a plus or minus 15. So let's set up our number line. 
So over here would be my negative 15. Over here is positive 15. All righty, so I'm going to test my zero. It's right in the middle. So I got 225 minus zero squared has to be less than or equal to zero. So I'll just usually go back to my very first original equation, plug it in and see what I get. Um, well, y'all, zero squared is zero. So 225 less than or equal to zero. Well, guess what? That's false. So since it's false, I'm not going to shade where the zero was located. I'm going to shade the ends. All righty, so how about interval notation? You got the two ends, so it's going to start at negative infinity, cruising until we get to that negative 15. So parentheses or brackets? Brackets. Okay. Then I'm going to union that and bracket from what? 15 to R five infinity. Hey, y'all, so they're not bad. Um, you just got to play with these and figure out, you know, after you get your two answers, where you want to shade that or not at it, okay? All right, so let's see, uh, two more to go. And like I said, I'm keeping it sort of this only section tonight. That way, Wednesday, we'll review for our test, and then you won't be overwhelmed. And then next week, we'll start the 9-3 test four material, okay? So let's solve this one. Now, this one, they got out of order. 14x minus 49 minus x squared has to be less than zero. So on this one, you definitely want to get it in order first. So it looks like this negative x squared has to jump to the front. So let's make that a negative x squared plus our 14x minus 49 less than zero and y'all here's another trick when you're factoring if the x squared term is negative you want to divide everybody by negative to get that positive so we're going to divide everybody by negative one now remember Division has to distribute over everything. And since I'm dividing by negative one, this less than will now become a greater than. So once again, reverse the inequality. Since dividing by a negative. All right, so all we did was change all these signs. Negative divided by negative made that a positive x squared. Positive divided by negative made that a negative 14x. Negative divided by negative made that a positive 49. Whoops, 49. And that is all greater than zero. So... We're going to factor this one. And I'll set it all equal to zero at that point. So the x squared, we know is the x and the x. All right, y'all, the last one's positive. So what I need to know are, 
What two signs would I put in here? Negatives. Okay, they're both negative. And now, what factors of 49 equal 14? Seven and seven. Yes, yeah, got it. Oh, so that's one of those repeating ones I got, member. So since it's repeating, I'm only going to get one answer. And y'all, to solve that, I'm just going to add seven. So when your number nine looks like this and you only got one number on it, remember what I said on the... Uh, our sheet here. Um, let me find it. If we only get one solution, then that is the only number we exclude from the domain. And it's less than, so it's got to be parentheses, right? So that's the only number. So since that's the only number I'm excluding, my interval will go from negative infinity to that seven, we're going to union around that seven and head off towards positive infinity. That means any other number you put into this will make it true other than that seven. So let's just put that seven is the only number that we exclude. So I'll tell you what's happening here. If you was to look at the graph of this, and that was your x-axis, over here at 7, the graph don't go all the way through. It's going to be one of those that sort of touches and is tangent so that it only has that one number, okay? All the other these are going either below or above the line and crossing it twice. So number six is one of the special ones. And then I had another star for this number seven. X squared plus 22 is less than 8X. So it looks like we need to subtract the 8X to get our zero over here. So that X will be about in the middle over here. So y'all want to put them in order. My X squared minus my 8X plus my 22 has to be less than zero. All righty, so we're going to factor that. X squared is an X and an X. That last sign's positive again. So this one will be just like that, and they'll both be negative. All right, y'all. So can you find me factors of 22 that add to get 8? Ooh, let's see. Uh, what do we got? 1 and 22. Uh, 2. And 11. Oh, that's it, ain't it? Let's see. Three don't work. Four don't work. Five, six. Nothing else works. So these factors will not add to get eight like I needed. So remember, we said if the polynomial does not factor, then we have a no solution. So that one does not factor. So on MathLab, you'll choose the tool on the bottom that looks like a zero with a line through it. This is what we call no solution, okay? Uh, Y'all, that's it. That's eight six. So you're going to have seven problems. Six will be like mine. You'll probably only get one number. Seven, more than likely, won't factor. So you just got them first five to really play with and try to factor, okay? 
Um, just remember the trick on factoring is to get everything on one side equal to zero and then go from there. All right, a question on those. Can you tell me again what uh what makes us do the bracket as opposed to the the parentheses? Um what determines brackets versus parentheses? Um yeah. So I'm going to use the brackets if it's greater than equal or less than equal. I'll use parentheses if it's greater or less than. So the equals makes the brackets. Okay. So let's see. Let me go back to one. Uh, so notice this number four here didn't have brackets uh, equals under it. So I use parentheses around my numbers. This number five did have equals on it. So we use, let me pull that up. We used brackets around the number. So it's the equal that makes the brackets, okay? Okay, got you. Because um, what that means is if it's got brackets, this number 15 makes it true. Um, but when it's parentheses, the numbers actually make it false. Okay. All right, a good question. Any more, y'all? All right, so let me stop my share then. So did y'all see the eclipse today? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. 